I've always said like Mito's the next keto. Like I am, I'm all about the mitochondria. I mean, it's the source, like my book, the energy formula. I mean, that's the source of energy. Uh. Yeah. It's where 95% of your ATP is created. The energy currency for the body, uh, adenosine triphosphate. And if you look at what used to be called the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle, this crank where ATP is largely uh, synthesized going through these organic acids, one of the last stops before you get to OAA is this NAD to NADH. And if you can stack things more in the direction of NAD, then we tend to see uh, NAD is therefore a substrate to actually uh, energetically have um, the mitochondria make ATP and keep them healthy and keep DNA healthy, um, which is all incredibly important to have healthy mitochondria to make more mitochondria to protect the DMA, DNA from damage to keep tel telomere length or telomere, however you like to say it, uh, length longer. Uh, NADs all correlated with that. So, um, and the thing is, as we age, NAD production plummets pretty dramatically. And NADase, the enzyme, uh, also called CD38, that actually increases dramatically as we age. So it's a double whammy where we're making less of it, we're breaking it down faster, and exposure to blue light, stress, alcohol, lack of sleep, you know, et cetera, et cetera, all correlate to less NAD. So you can see where like this can become a huge problem and it is a logical strategy to try and boost NAD levels to have more energy, to have healthier mitochondria, to live longer and certainly thrive. And so absolutely, there's a number of ingredients out there that get talked about like true niogen, which is nicotinamide riboside NR, um, NMN, uh, which I'm a huge fan of here. Like, and, and I will say I, I lean towards NMN over NR. Um, I think the data is a little bit more compelling there. Um, I think Rhonda Patrick and, and David Sinclair would kind of lean in with me there, but, um, it's more direct in the pathway than NR and the data is pretty solid. There, it's a lot of animal studies and, and a couple human studies, but it's coming in. I would say that if you look at the animal studies and extrapolate that out, probably the dosing of NMN is too low, like where a lot of people are taking 100 milligrams, 200 milligrams, maybe 500 milligrams. It seems like we're talking more like one to 2.5 grams a day. So and that gets expensive. I will say one of the cheapest and probably even more effective ways of boosting NAD is niacin, the full flush niacin. There's a study with 500 milligrams twice a day where it boosted uh, NAD levels eight times, like pretty dramatically. And full flush niacin is not a joke. So uh, be prepared, this, this is a high dose. So peristesis is that flushing, burning, tingling, it literally will look like you have a sunburn. Your skin will feel itchy. It's not great, but you can potentially reduce this with um, some aspirin or some fish oil. Uh, there's been studies on that. So I personally just, you know, I've gotten used to it. You do adapt to this over time as well. Um, but that is one of the, the most potent and cheap ways to boost NAD that I know of. Also an interesting idea that I'm playing with is that I believe that with this kind of superficial flushing that's happening, this tingling, this peristesis, this blood flow to the area, it could be incredibly powerful because you're ramping up NAD in the mitochondria already. Now you're doing it at the superficial level and you're going into a red light sauna. This could be like the ultimate stack. So that's something that I've been looking at. I want to study. Um, and then the polyphenols, when it comes to NAD, are really powerful. At uh, can can yes, just, okay, because yeah. there's just I I just need to mention th something really important, and one of the pitfalls there might be with NMN. 
Yeah. Because it's a bit like there are some like interesting study studies and mechanistic mechanisms that and processes that yeah. it may be that actually NMN doesn't have a way to get down it. to niacin. Yeah, break down actually <laughs> yeah. to niacin. Yeah, so it's what possible. do you think? Yeah, it's, it's possible. possible. We don't know yet, but I'm just glad that you're mentioning niacin. It's, as a way it's to... why it's why I think that a high, like a really high dose, may be necessary too. Like this is like kind of the same thought process with something like glutathione or carnosin. Um, that like these are multiple amino acids, and everyone says, oh, like you know, you just break them down in your gut, but Yes, you may break them down in your gut, even collagen, like with hydroxyproline, but you end up reassembling them too. This is the point. Yeah. So, um, and if you take a high enough level, like for example, like carnosine, which is um, beta alanine and histidine, at some point you overwhelm this enzyme carnosinase in this case, and there is a high enough dose that it will get through. So this may be the case with NMN, and it's really hard to tease out unless we've really, you know, explored all that. But I do love niacin, and this idea of stacking a pathway could be really potent where you take NMN and the full flesh niacin, nicotinic acid. And that may be one of the best things to do, especially if you pair it with the best polyphenols. Not resveratrol, not terostilbe, not EGCG. The best polyphenols, according to studies where they've all been looked at head to head, is apigenin and fisetin, or some people say fisetin. So fisetin is strawberries, apigenin is parsley. Um, quercetin could be really good if you uh, address the bioavailability. So if it's like in a liposome. But those are those are probably my favorite ones. I think resveratrol and, and EGCG and teros, those are actually kind of overrated. You just mentioned fisetin, uh, apigenin, apigenin, and uh, the enzyme CD38. Yeah, exactly. This, uh, with H. So like when I found uh, found out like this kind of uh, yeah. mechanistic things, like it, yeah. it really blew my mind. So uh, do I do I get it right that for that NMN can really work? You should take also fisetine and apigenin so you can decrease the amount of CD38. Yeah, because like, okay, like this is again, like the, the idea, like when I, I really look to the biochemistry, the formulator in me wants to exploit a pathway. How do I leverage this pathway to my advantage? So kind of my ultimate stack would then be niacin, NMN, because maybe they do have synergy, Uh, and then having um, apigenin and fisetin to inhibit the CD38. So it will make the uh, NAD more available that you're already creating. And so like this is, again, like it's kind of like I was saying with HMB and dilucine, right? It's like that's the incredible combination. Like I always want to like look at both sides. How do I manipulate both sides to my ad advantage? And what is your take on spermidine? I love it. <laughs> like that. So uh, we don't really know like the, the most effective dose, but I can tell you that not only is it uh, associated with autophagy, that um, cellular detox cleanup, think of like a little vacuum cleaner going into your, your cells. This isn't just important from the aspect of cells not having these Uh, toxins in them and them functioning better. But when a cell does have these toxins, it's a signal to kill the cell. And your cells become old, senescent, and they become targeted to die. And so, and in time, that means you're older and you're dying. So keeping your cells healthier is beneficial. This is why not eating so much all the time, maybe protein cycling, calorie cycling, fasting can be helpful. 